Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited's conference call to discuss the Q1 FY 2024 results. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us today Mr. Saurabh Chawla, Executive Director of Finance and Strategy. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. Also, recording or transcribing of this call without prior permission of the management is strictly prohibited. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Saurabh Chawla for the opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome our shareholders, analysts, and all other stakeholders to our Q1 fiscal year 24 earnings call. I really appreciate you joining at this late hour. Before we delve into our company's quarterly figures and achievements, I think it is essential to situate our performance within the overarching narrative of India's infrastructure for particularly the aviation sector and broader economic context. Post-pandemic, our economy has shown signs of resilient recovery. India's economic trajectory is promising, characterized by steady growth rates, enhanced food manufacturing, and a favorable investment climate. Notably, infrastructure remains central to this growth story, acting as both a driver and beneficiary. India's thrust towards infrastructure development isn't just a policy choice, it's a strategic move to catalyze holistic development. With programs like Atman Nirbhar Bharat and National Infrastructure Pipeline, the nation has showcased its ambition, ushering in investments and innovations. Our airport projects have been pivotal. Beyond mere transport hubs, we see them as India's gateways to global commerce and culture. Our commitment to redefine the traveler experience remains undeterred. Technology integrations, sustainability initiatives, and passenger-first approach have not just elevated user experience, but also set new industry standards. Amidst this macro by backdrop, our journey over the past quarter has been both strategic and transformative. We've leveraged technology, sealed key partnerships, initiative to simplify the corporate structure through the merger process and continue to enhance operational efficiency across all projects. Like every growth journey, ours hasn't been devoid of challenges. From industry disruptions to regulatory changes, we have navigated a diverse set of obstacles. Yet every challenge has unveiled an opportunity, be it in terms of innovation, new partnerships and process optimizations. We are excited and fully equipped to harness these pros pros prospects, amplifying our growth and contributions. With this note now, I would like to briefly run you through our Q1 fiscal year 24 performance. We began the new fiscal year first quarter with a healthy growth on operational and financial parameters. GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited's gross revenue increased by 40% year on year to INR 2018 crores in Q1 fiscal 24, driven by strong growth in traffic at our operational airports. EBITDA increased by 77% to INR 753 crores, with EBITDA margins at 51%, up 10% year on year, reflecting a strong growth in the business and underpinning, underpinned growth drivers. Net profit after tax from continuing operations of about 16 crores in Q1 fiscal 24. On the operational front, we are seeing strong momentum in traffic and expect this upward trend to continue further. In Q1 fiscal 24, overall tax traffic increased by 26% by on by to 27 million passenger traffic and this has surpassed the pre-COVID levels. That is, Delhi and Hyderabad airports have crossed 14 and 12 percent more in Q1 fiscal year 20, respectively. 
During the quarter, in addition to healthy growth of domestic traffic, international traffic has also increased substantially. Delhi and Hyderabad Airport international traffic increased by 35% and 33% respectively. In its continued growth trajectory, Hyderabad Airport handled highest quarterly passenger traffic in Q1 fiscal 24 and crossed the 6 million passenger mark. Now I would like to highlight the key developments of the quarter. We are steadily progressing on the merger of GMR Airports with GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited, which will ultimately enhance the shareholder value. In this context, varied steps have been achieved, paving the way further for the entire merger completion within the expected timeline of fiscal year 2024. We've already received the CCI approval during the quarter four of 23, and recently we received a no objection from the, from, to the merger from RBI and both the stock exchanges. Now the merger application is expected to be filed shortly with NCLC. Significant progress has been achieved with respect to capacity expansion in our Delhi, Hyderabad, and Preet airports. As of July 31st, 2023, Hyderabad and Delhi airports achieved 92% and 93% of CapEx progress. Delhi and Hyderabad airports are targeted for completion in Q3 fiscal 24 and Q2 fiscal 24. A brief glimpse of the same is available in our investor presentation for the quarter. We expect the new tariff regime at Delhi to be enforced by April 2024. We achieved historic milestone in Delhi airport. We inaugurated the fourth runway and the Eastern Cross Taxiway on July 14, 2023. Delhi Airport becomes the only Indian airport with four operational runways and elevated cross taxiway, which will aid in Delhi becoming an attractive hub along with our sustainability journey to becoming a net zero carbon emission airport by 2030, reinforcing its preeminent position in the Indian aviation sector. MOPA or Goa Airport is also fully operational. Domestic flights had already commenced from January 5th, with Indigo, Akasa, SpiceJet, and Vistara are now operational and expanding their footprint. International operations also started on July 21st with Air India operating international flight from Mopa Goa to London Gatwick three times weekly. Cumulative traffic at Mopa Airport has already crossed 1.9 million mark as on July 31st. In the month of July, Goa Airport welcomed 2,000 international passengers. We are also expecting the new tariff regime at MOPA to be in force in Q3 FY24. On the regulatory front, Telecom <clears throat> Disputes Settlement and Appellate, Appellate Tribunal, TDSAT, has pronounced its order on July, 30, July 21st with respect to our appeal preferred by Delhi Airport against the orders passed by Airport Economic Regulatory Authority, ERA, towards tariff determination for Delhi Airport for the second and third control period. TDSAT in its order has allowed certain claims of Delhi Airport and has, and has dis disallowed certain other claims. The matter is still to, be to achieve its finality. Hyderabad Airport on, July, on June 6th announced the divestment of about 8,18,000 square feet warehouse facility at Hyderabad Airport to ILP Core Ventures Private Limited, a step-down subsidiary of Indospace Core Private Limited. The set transaction reinforces the GMR Group's capabilities in developing world-class institutional-grade real estate project assets and generating value through successful exit. GMR Hyderabad Aviation SEZ, a 100% subsidiary of, of Ghail, has recently signed a land lease agreement with Safran Aircraft Engine Services India Private Limited, a subsidiary of Safran, a global leader in aircraft propulsion and equipment, space, and defense markets. As per the agreement, GASL will lease land to Safran to operate engine MRO, faci MRO facility for LEAP turbofan engines, spread over 23.5 acres of land parcel within the SEZ area 
of GMR Aerospace and Industrial Park. This facility will occupy around 36,500 square meters of built-up space. The construction of the facility will commence in September and is expected to be handed over in December 2024 with operations set to commence in 2025. The facility in Hyderabad will be the largest MRO center in Safran engines, aircraft engines network. On airport land development, in Delhi airport, we have initiated self-development of commercial building of about six lakh square feet in the gateway district of Aero City. In Hyderabad airport, it has initiated development works for GMR interchange, which is a retail project. In Mopa Goa airport, land monetization processes for two hotel were successfully completed with letters of intent to award issues to the two highest bidders. In Bhogapuram Airport, foundation stone of the airport was laid by the State Chief Minister on May 3, 2023. EPC bid evaluation is currently under process. <clears throat> RNR processes have been fully completed. Grant of right of way over airport land from the airport from the authorities under process. Financial closure is expected. It is an advanced stage and expected soon. The sanction of our lead bank is already in place. Nagpur Airport, the review petition was filed by Ministry of Civil Aviation and Supreme Court challenging the earlier Supreme Court order. However, the petition was dismissed by the Supreme Court in its order dated May 11, 2023. We expect execution of concession agreement at the earliest. On Medan Airport, on a year-on-year -year basis, traffic is up 62% to 1.8 million passengers in Q1 fiscal 24. Currently, 18 domestic and six international destinations are connected in Medan, and they're working steadily towards adding new destinations. We have continued our rigor on the ESG front at each of our airports. GMR in its strategic vision of nation building to future ready sustainable airports ensures that the principle of sustainable development is fully imbibed in unique and innovative infrastructure development or day-to-day -day operational activity which we undertake. In this direction, Delhi Airport added another milestone in its sustainability journey of becoming a net zero carbon emission airport by 2030 by inaugurating the fourth runway and the Eastern Cross Taxiway. While the 4.4 kilometer long runway will enhance the operational efficiency at Delhi Airport, the Eastern Cross Taxiway will help lessen aircraft emissions and additionally reap in several other benefits in Terralia, reducing about 55,000 tons of carbon dioxide emission, which is equivalent to planting about 15 lakh trees. Hyderabad Airport too continued its sustainability journey and trans transitioned to 100% sustainable green energy for its energy consumption at the airport and across its ecosystem, which will reduce its carbon footprint by about 9,300 tons of carbon dioxide annually. Delhi and Hyderabad airports have maintained an ASQ score of five during this quarter. In conclusion, as we move ahead in 2023, we are not only just geared to navigate the challenges but also to seize the myriad opportunities that the evolving Indian and global aviation landscape presents. I express my deepest gratitude to our investors, partners, and team members for their continued trust and support. Together, we are forging a path that is exemplary in the annals of Indian aviation journey. Now, I would like to open the floor to q and Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Good evening, sir. 
and thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on the TV set order, which was the very, very favorable to our Delhi airport. My question is, uh, what is the status and way forward, and what could be possible financial implications? Any color would be helpful. Uh, Jiyake Garu, would you like yes, to answer sir. this? Yes, sir. I think TDSAT order has been received. I think as we explained that it has to reach the finality. In the meantime, uh, uh, since the dial is going to file the application for the port control period, and uh, which is expected to file in the third, uh, third quarter of this financial year, uh, we'll incorporate uh, the uh, TDSAT order if there is any, if there is no stay from the Supreme Court in the meantime, then incorporate and then file the application. The quantums uh, are being worked out, uh, and it will be very difficult to uh, state the currently what will be the quantum of the uh, increase that we are expecting. So has the dial has, has the uh, year of filed this uh, the uh, the petition in the Supreme Court against the order? No. Dial, uh, because there are certain favorable orders that uh, some are not favorable. We are examining the issues not favorable, whether they should go for appeal or not. The legal is examining that aspect. What I am trying to explain you is that there are so many stakeholders who are available who can go to the Supreme Court. Because the next appeal lies with the Supreme Court. Either airlines can go or any other uh, person who is getting affected because of the tariff, they can go to the Supreme Court. All stakeholders are permitted to appeal. Understood, sir. So my second question is, sir, you raised money of uh, $12 billion to MCD of, at Delhi Airport mm -hmm. and $20 billion at Goa Airport, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, was uh, both, the, uh, both the paper was for refinancing or one was for the expansion and the other was for refinancing of the existing debt? Twelve billion. What uh, Delhi Airport has raised in the month of June is for the, as part of the phase three expansion, which is happening now. With that, uh, for the entire project cost uh, till today approved by the board is about eleven thousand five fifty crore has been fully tied up. As far as that is, uh, as far as the dial is concerned, uh, Goa uh, right now uh, we are in the process of uh, thinking of going for refinancing. Otherwise, you have not raised any money as far as the Goa is concerned in the last quarter. Understood. So my last question is, how are the traffic in last 45 days? Are we seeing the same momentum continuing? The traffic, uh, you are talking about Goa or as a whole? No, no, no traffic at the, at the Delhi and Hyderabad. The last 45 days. Very well. Both uh, the me, are the thing. Yeah, sorry, yeah. you can explain. Let me let me take this question. The and traffic is is uh, as per our forecast, uh, internal forecast. Uh, obviously, there is seasonality in in traffic because the mm -hmm. second quarter uh, usually is is a little bit subdued. Uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> I would say that the delta over the previous year uh, continues to be maintained. And this is thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sai Siddhartha Pasupaliti from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible, sir. You may go ahead. Yes, you're audible, okay. yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on a, a really good set of uh, results, sir. So uh, uh, my first question would be uh, your retail and non-aero revenue per pack for Hyderabad, for Hyderabad Airport have been a bit volatile over the past few quarters. So if you could explain us any seasonality effects as in how to think about uh, a stable uh, level of spending for the same. Yes, you want to take this? Yeah. Uh, I can take it. As far as Hyderabad is concerned, actually the non-aeronautical revenue is doing very well. There was some fluctuation between the fourth quarter and first quarter uh, because uh, in the fourth quarter, some of the revenues, especially duty free, uh, was getting at a higher uh, revenue share, about 35%. In the first quarter, we moved down to 23% because 
in case of hyderabad duty free the revenue share is depending upon the uh, the turnover they achieve if they achieve more than 65 crore rupees then only they come into 35% that's why in the last quarter of the hyderabad they got higher revenue uh, hyderabad airport the second point is that some of the uh, rent yielding assets have been transferred to some other company uh, and the money has been raised by hyderabad airport as a result there was some lesser revenue coming from the uh, rentals in case of hyderabad airport that is where there is a slight volatility on our difference between fourth quarter to first quarter otherwise hyderabad airport is doing very well and the spend per passenger is also good only in case of the duty free has slightly fallen but it is now picking up much better i think we will see a good momentum going forward yeah thanks sir uh, so uh, just a, a second question on um, following up uh, your other expenses have also been quite volatile with uh, first quarter spends lower than uh, the last year third quarter so if you could share some reasons on the same and also why the associated profit is growing uh, at the pace as it is growing at the moment in case of hyderabad yeah you want to take saurabh or can i explain uh, why don't you go ahead yeah in case of hyderabad in the fourth quarter uh, there were some exceptional expenditure as been incurred there were of the right off of the amount received from his bank about 63 crore rupees and also we did the refinancing of the bond where we have made uh, the, the the hedging has been cancelled and the notional has been booked and some legal expenses have also been booked as a result in the fourth quarter the hyderabad expenditure was very high whereas whatever we have incurred in the now first quarter is now the standard expenses that we have incurred that is the reason why in the first quarter versus third quarter there was a fall in the expenditure in case of hyderabad airport and going forward we are expecting that we will be maintaining more or less the first quarter expenditure we are now very conscious about booking every expenditure properly over a period of time so we will not see the such type of uh, differences going forward so this will pertain to all the assets sir or only had by all our exceptional expenses in the fourth quarter okay so more maybe we can quantify those uh, yeah. if you want uh, we can highlight that aspect uh, so yeah. Uh, so you want to do that yeah so uh, these were some of the one off which we have recorded in the previous quarter which is some uh, uh, provision we have made for the receivable to the extent of 65 crore and some uh, uh, loss on settlement of derivative instrument we have recorded and some loss on discarded assets we have recorded about 20 crore and some forex loss on the ccb which around 27 crore we have recorded and there were some uh, closing provision we have made for uh, some of the expenses related to the arbitration which is approximately 100 plus crore in the financial statement of march 2023 so these were not there in the june quarter so i think you know just as a guidance uh, uh, we we are <clears throat> basically back to our normalized levels and you should expect a similar levels to continue all right thanks sir thank you ladies and gentlemen you may please press star and 1 if you wish to ask a question the next question is from the line of bharat jain from icici securities please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir can you tell us what was the delhi dpt top line in the so voice is very low we can't hear you bharat hello is this better Yeah, much, yeah, much better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you uh, tell us the numbers for Delhi duty free, the top line and the profit in the quarter? Yeah, just one second. Hmm. Rajesh, would you? Rajesh, you want to take this? Ah, uh, sort of. I don't have the number readily with me. I'll, okay, just, I'll just just a second. Just a second. We'll get the number. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the top line is uh, uh, 448 crore for June quarter, and it okay. was 421 crore in the March quarter. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, and the profit? And the profit, uh, uh, it's a profit and loss before tax. It is coming 86 crore in the current quarter, and previous quarter it was 84 crore. And at tax level, it is 
64 crore and 98 crore in the previous quarter so previous quarter we have recorded one exceptional item which is on okay. account of the gst refund yeah gst re got it sir and uh, sir can you give us some color on how you are planning to increase the rate of spp spend in duty free rajesh this is yeah your... yeah sure 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 sir so uh, uh, bharat uh, in terms of our plan to expand increase spp there are various various factors you know it be discussed in the previous in the previous calls also primarily one is you know you bring in the right kind of offerings considering the mix of traffic what you have secondly like what we have done uh, recently in hyderabad and where we have seen almost 20% jump in the spp where we have expanded the duty free area uh, so these are the two two uh, key factors uh, which uh, contributes and naturally uh, the other one is linked to the inflationary and the the price linked uh, factors which increases the spp so these are the three time uh, uh, factors for which goes uh, undergoes for the increase in spp okay sir and so sir uh, if i can just one clarification the cosmetics do we tend to earn more margins on cosmetics uh generally on perfumes and cosmetics when you compare with the liquor the margins are slightly lower uh, uh slightly lower i won't say very significantly lower but especially when you compare with the liquor yes those are slightly lower okay sir understood thank you very much sir that's all from me thank you the next question comes from the line of sai shraddha sir sorry sai siddhartha pasupalli from kotak securities please go ahead uh yeah thanks sir thanks for the follow up uh, so i just had a, a one final question so uh, the associate profits uh, have been uh, growing uh, quite uh, year on year year on year as well as quarter on quarter uh, i wanted to know uh, uh, the reason associated with it and also the interest cost has come down on a qoq basis for delhi and hyderabad airports so what is driving this decline uh, would also be helpful yeah actually in previous quarter there was a uh, loss we have recorded for the uh, bajoli holi uh, so during the quarter the performance of the bajoli holi has been improved so it's mainly because of that the profit has been improved and other associates and jvs are also performing better in the current quarter and also interest cost interest cost interest there is not the, there is no reduction as such uh okay sir uh, that would be all on some my side thanks thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sri ram r an individual investor please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir i just have one question uh, regarding the uh, sir, sorry sir but the line for you is not very clear question yeah uh, i'm uh, i'm Go ahead, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, it's much better, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I just have one question. So uh, this is regarding the Noida airport, uh, which is coming up in, you know, FY twenty five twenty six. I mean, what sort of, uh, you know, impact that would have on the Delhi side? So honestly speaking, uh, given the growth that we see in the aviation sector. Uh, uh, over a period of time we would need more airports in the country uh, noida will be a welcome change it will take a lot of burden off uh, of the delhi airport in our strategy we have always seen noida taking our tier 2 traffic away uh, and and some part of the cargo traffic away but you know noida going live is still 2 to 3 years down the road uh, by which time we would be hitting our capacity levels and it will be a good time for for us to concentrate on more high yielding traffic rather than the low yielding traffic so uh, honestly speaking will not have too much of impact as long as india keeps growing at around 6 to 7% on a secular basis thanks thank you that answers my question thank you The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. 
um hello everyone i hope i'm audible to you all um my question uh, is linked more to uh, the data reported in the in the in third quarter in in the current quarter which is about 7.5 billion rupees uh in fact if i'm yeah about 7.5 now this is uh, meaningfully higher than the run rate seen in the 9 and fy 23 kind of time period on a quarterly basis potentially almost double of the quantum theme last year in the first nine months on a, on a quarterly basis. I wanted to kind of confirm or clarify, is there any one of uh, inside uh, the, the, in the in in the first quarter print of a vector, uh, or should this be a sustainable number going forward? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to take this, or should I take it? Yeah, I think in the, as far as the uh, financials, this the quarter are concerned uh, there are no one off uh, as such uh, it is a actual real performance the revenues are substantially gone up and the increase in the profitability and turnover is mainly because in case of hyderabad airport in addition to the traffic going up the tariffs have also gone up compared to the previous year this year the tariffs are almost uh, 1.6x as a result you got a better turnover and that will continue for the next two years until they go back into the new otherwise there are no one of uh, anything this time and they are all very clean and we are expecting the same type of uh, performance going forward and we may add anything else for us yeah so in addition to what drk garu just said on the hyderabad there is also increase in the cpd revenues uh, of dial on account of new contracts with bharti reality uh, so that is uh, <laughs> Yeah, on account of taking over the, on it's a uh, taking over the new land parcels uh, in the Ayodhya city. So basically, that's the booking that has happened, which has increased the EBITDA levels. Um, understood. Uh, again, uh, on the on the aspect that you have said, uh, the first one, which is Hyderabad Airport's uh, aero tariffs going up. Uh, it is is it fully reflected uh, the impact of uh, in fact. Both the factors that you said, which is uh, Bharti reality and Hyderabad airport aero tariff going up, are they kind of fully reflected in the quarter gone by, or would we see a further impact uh, on the positive side increment? No, as far as the increase in the tariffs is fully reflected in case of Hyderabad airport. Bharti, the second phase of the uh, 2.13 million square foot, which they have taken over, and uh, the current quarter revenues have already been booked. And they will continue to be there. So uh, there is no uh, change of such. Understood. And in case of Hyderabad Aero tariff uh, post a two-year period that you are suggesting, uh, do we envisage uh, tariffs coming down uh, in a base case scenario? How do we see through the numbers of? Uh... They they see all the current tariff structure which is approved by the TDSR, which is now in, under implementation. 23, 24, 24, 25, and 25, 26. So the, uh, this tariff will remain almost the same. And 26, anyway, again, direct the uh, hell has to file another application for fourth control period. And basing on the uh, that point of time and the capex involved in everything, again, tariff determination will happen. It will be very difficult to guess what will be the tariff in the fourth control period. Otherwise, next two to three years, the run rate will continue to be the same. Understood. Uh, and since uh, there are several aspects uh, because of which Hyderabad's uh, EBITDA is actually going up, as you suggested through the call, uh, is there a sense of any kind of dividends that will be distributed away from that um, airport? Uh, basing on the current uh, covenants under the uh, bond covenant. Um, uh, Right now, this financial year uh, appears to be difficult, but next financial year onwards, uh, then Hyderabad Airport will be in a position to clear the dividend. So, Aditya, basically, we are on path, like I highlighted earlier, also that as we continue on our path of generating free cash, effort will be uh, for dividend flows by the airport asset companies to the platform. And uh, of course, the merger of GAL into GMR Airport uh, Infrastructure Limited, GAL, would uh, would be very helpful 
to upstream those dividends. First off the block will be Hyderabad. Uh, whether it happens during this current year or next year, I think uh, let's just wait it out. We prefer not to give any guidance uh, to the markets on that. Performance itself will demonstrate it. Maybe the final question on my side, if I may, uh, again relates to Hyderabad Airport because interesting things are happening. A, is there a case of you uh, taking out the take of uh, 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 the, uh, the government entity over here? Uh, and B, uh, as we have seen in case of Debbie, is there a case of uh, 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 the CGF issue turning out to be in our favor and from an regulatory perspective uh, be benefiting? First, what is the first question? Uh, so I think 26% stake is still held uh, uh, by the government entity over here, right? Yeah. Is there a case of that? No, Aditya, there is no proposal of the government to sell its stake. There's nothing which is formally there. So we really can't uh, react to any speculative uh, pro <clears throat> thought process. If there is a proposal in place, obviously, uh, we will look at the merits of it uh, and uh, ensure that, uh, you know, we participate in it. Having said that, our overall philosophy is that there is to be capital light. So unless and until there's a good arbitrage in the value, uh, why would we participate in it? We would prefer to partner with some of the financial majors who may uh, come and participate to buy out that stake. But there is no current proposal by any government authority to sell their stake, uh, whether in Delhi or Hyderabad or any other airport uh, across the country. Uh, and any option values from any regulatory uh, positives that come in from Hyderabad, specific the CGF issue, timelines and probability, if you could share. That the appeals are pending before the TDSAC. Now the Hyderabad Delhi airport uh, hearings have been completed with all the other. DDSAT is now hearing the Mayal case is going on. So most probably they will take it up in the queue uh, than Hyderabad. So CGF mm -hmm. is being fought before them, and uh, we are at mm -hmm. And we continue to agitate before the TDSAT for a favorable order. Understood. Um, um, those were my questions. Thanks a lot for the time that you gave me. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one. Participants, to ask a question, you may please press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Paraswasa from Om Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, once the capitalization of the current expansion is done, how much interest cost and depreciation will go up for the Hyderabad airport as well as the Delhi airport? In case of the Delhi, uh, the depreciation, uh, which is currently about 500 crore rupees, can go up to almost 1,000 crores. And interest can be, uh, once we complete the entire capitalization, the interest uh, amount could be in the range of about 1,400 crores. And the same for uh, Hyderabad? In case of Hyderabad, the current depletion about 230 or 300 crore rupees so will go up by almost uh, double uh, because of the 6,700 crore capitalization. Interest cost will be around uh, 800 crore rupees. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no further questions. I would now like to hand the floor over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining uh, on our Q1 call at this late hour. Appreciate uh, your questions. Uh, the team, of course, is available offline to answer any other specific queries you may have uh, on, on, our, uh, on the data that we have uh, published so far and any strategy questions that you may have as we go forward. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. On behalf of GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.